while I have the stranger I will do a video about the, the book of Zechariah to today and maybe Malachi uh, well this is the longest book of the old, uh, the small prophets in the old covenant and uh, the first half was written by one man the second one was written by the Deutero Zechariah from chapter 9 and but it is one book occurred uh, in the Bible so we will handle it as one book uh, the first book, uh, the first part is uh, mostly about the present uh, of Zechariah and the second, uh, well, uh, that's in another age. Uh, the first one is uh, starts in under the rulership of Darius. Uh, there is the problem within the uh, uh, with the other books that uh, Zechariah was Ido, uh, the uh, son or grandson and um, uh, there is the picture from Revelation the red horse and other horses the first part is uh, on a psychedelic language but it's uh, really not about prophecies uh, you don't um, have to associate strange language with prophecy language. They can be different and this is just uh, one part of that. And, uh, when you watch carefully and you know just some simple basic things about the um, age of Zechariah, uh, you can decipher this book. You don't need common myth. The symbols are really simple, like, uh, well, everything in the first part, if I can say that. It's mostly that they should build Jerusalem and worship the God or else thing. Then God has seven eyes in there literally that I wandering around like the eyes of blind I.O. in Terry Pratchett's works and well yes uh, and there are those things like the four horns in Zechariah what of course represents four nations with they are and then comes the four carpenters. The four carpenters is just the uh, religious gibberish. They don't represent anything but uh, that God will kill them and, and nothing specific. So just don't see too much in uh, these than they really are. And there are some things uh, that they requires you to read uh, Ezekiel's book because uh, some pictures are reused in Zechariah from that. Zechariah is really the prophet that uh, just repeats all the hopes and fears and um, thinking of the Jews without uh, making them anything more than hopes and wishful thinking like uh, th these are specifically are uh, just repeating the old promises of God that you will conquer all the territory from sea to sea and from the Euphrates to the Nile and the Nile will dry up and Egypt will be desolated uh, those, those bullshit that all over and over and again come back in the Old Testament and let's face it they are not realistic hopes um, and they, uh, again there is the we will multiply and rule over all the world under a Jewish theocracy 
even if they will be in a separated country. I just looking my notes, I'm sorry I for that. That branch thing is the only thing that uh, can look strange in this book of Zechariah, but maybe that that's just represents the Israelite country, the Jewish country, so it's not that much. The, the simple amount of these signs are <coughs> when there is the two palm tree and the uh, golden what is the torch keeper thing or candle, candle chandelier yeah chandelier and that's a simple thing Jews and God oh wow fucking ridiculous how much thing uh, how much verses are lost just for that the two palm trees the religious leader and the not religious leader of the country the military leader if you prefer so basically this is about what this book is about and the problems are really happening in the second part where what, what really just exaggerates into nothingness I will s oh and there is that nice part that the Lord hates a lot of people and it seems uh, from Zechariah chapter 13 verse 7 that the Lord is gay. Yes, the Lord of the Old Covenant is homosexual. Is a homosexual male thing. A gay faggot. Now let's see some more things. Oh, there is that uh, <laughs> every Jew will have them other non-Jew uh, catching their ropes and <laughs> whatnot. The second part from chapter 9 is really about the Hellenistic period and uh, it was written about the, in the Maccabean era where Maccabans are famous on making retrospective prophecies and writings and just uh, do exaggerating really too much and this is also what happens in that part of the book uh, and the uh, there is that l very last chapter, the chapter 14 of Zechariah, what really is just a description of the Maccabean uprising. Of course the Montoliv split in, in half and the wall and, and, and that is just really just nonsense, but really it's not about resurrection of the dead uh, well you would know what the resurrection of the dead me meant uh, to the Old Testament uh, it meant uh, the re regaining power for a uh, for the holy nation and that's all so it's nothing else but thanks you for watching.